Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly SIG meeting. We are the 23 of May 2023. Today around the table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, as usual, Hervé Lemer, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Varten, and hi Igor, welcome. Um, so, announcement. Uh, the weekly, as far as I understand, today's core weekly release has been delayed, but it's fixed and the job is running. Is that what you are saying? That uh, is, remember? yes. That was that was what Hervé was re reinforcing based on a correction we had to make earlier today. Should be okay later today. Uh, so we'll keep watching the release and package jobs, and then we will defer the, for the change log to the to the documentation team. That should be you and and eventually Alex. Uh, should be okay. No infrastructure action. Is that okay? That's that's my assumption as well. That's what I understand. Is the oh. infra infra is working. It, there's not a break we're seeing. The break was actually in the source code, and that break in the source code is fixed. Cool. Happy to hear. So that means, Stefan, you should be able to update Infra CI and Weekly CI tomorrow. No rush on doing it today due to that delay. Correct. Um, do you have other announcements, folks? Okay, so now the announcement, upcoming calendar next week. Next weekly will be 30 May 2023. That should be 2.407, if I'm not mistaken. I have 401. Oh, no, 407 is weekly. You're correct. Yeah. And we will have an LTS. I already forgot. 2.401.1. Nice. Uh, it's, would it be in June or 31 May, May? 31 May. Yeah, 31 May. Okay. Uh, Alex is the release lead, is that correct? That is correct. Not my fault. Release lead. Um, about that, yeah, just remind me, we finished the calendar and Mark, we have to, to talk about tagging weekly and permissions. Uh, oh, thank you, yes. And, and I have to exit in 21 minutes. So Damien, we may okay. have to we'll put that relatively yes, earlier on the list. Yeah, that will be the first element. Okay. Um, we had last week the 16, we had the uh, security advisory. We already talked about that, and we don't have other announced on the mailing list. Uh, next major event, none that I'm uh, aware about. Is there any major event where you are aware, folks? No? OK. No. So let's get started with uh, that item. So as part of work done on the SIG platform meeting, but that has an impact on the team. We changed the way the Jenkins controller, the official Docker image is built. Before 10 days ago, we used to have a script on each run on master that run on our private trusted. The script was for the Linux image in charge of, okay, let's check the two last version of weekly line and two last version of LTS line and check on the Docker hub that each of the definition of that image, the different operating systems, the different CPUs, the different tags, all of them are published. If they are not, then it fail and it try to republish the image. And the paper that looks really good and that has worked somehow for the past years. The issue we see for the past year we saw was that sometimes when we introduce a new platform, a new operating system, a major operating system change, a new CPU platform, then the two 
past releases are overridden, rebuilt and changed, which changed the checksum of the end users. And that one started to be less and less acceptable. So the, we changed recently. Now we need to create a tag. The tag is the Jenkins version you want to build with the Docker image. And once that tag is detected, every five minutes, the job watch for new tags. And if it detects the tags, it builds only the image that come from the tag version. So the advantage is that we only build the new version. We don't have to fear of a redone or adding new platform. So we can deliver way more often. That create new questions that will be for the SIG platform meeting later today. Uh, do we need now for the Docker image to have a LTS and a a weekly branches or master and LTS? We should, but that's the new question. Now we have the foundation. And for us, the infrastructure team, that means we need to set up the permission correctly. The request from Alex was, should we had as maintainer of the official Docker uh, image, the members of the release team. So they should be able to create the tags. That's the question. And maybe the answer, if the answer is no, that means we need to build an automation that will avoid this member to have this permission. The automation should be in charge of creating the tag when we have a core release. That could be a solution because the core release system has a token that has the permission to create the tag. So maybe we could avoid that. Until then, we have either to build that automation or decide if it's okay to have a few members to be maintainer, that could be an intermediate, members such as Alex, Alex Brandes. My proposal is that we use that intermediate. We had a few selected member. Tim Yacom is already able. Mark and I are maintainer. We have the permission. Eventually adding uh, infrastructure team member. But I think the three of us are there. I propose that we only add Alex Brandes nominatively until we settle for that. Or we accept that every uh, Jenkins release team member are also co-maintainer of the Docker image. That's a balance to find. So that, and, and tell yep. me about the the risk that you see there. I'm not sure. Yeah. So we've already got maintainers on the the container image, but they're not necessarily release leads. And so the idea was, should we add the release leads to the list of people who are allowed to maintain the controller container image? Exactly. The risk is in order to create a tag, that means you are you need to be granted permission that allows you to push code, mm -hmm. not only pull requests. So that means you can you have special special you you need to be a writer, so we can eventually protect the master branch, but there is still a, a permission risk on that area compared to creating the tag automatically as part of the release core process. Got it. So, so the other alternative might be some in some future day, allow the core release process to push a tag to a repository that right now it cannot access. Right Thank now, you. it has no permission to write to, whereas it does have permission to write to Jenkins core. Yes. So that means we should be able to grant it permission to write also on the Docker right. image because somehow automating that part instead on instead of relying on a human will avoid a lot of mistakes. Right. Okay. Now, I guess even further, we could consider converging the controller's container image into the Jenkins core image. But then the, I guess the problem is that now locks out the cont current container maintainers so that they would have to also be core maintainers. And that's probably not healthy. Okay, forget exactly. it. Ignore and that's that also, I said that. that was a bad exactly. thing. And that's also a second topic uh, uh, that I personally want to bring and push forward on the um, SIG platform meeting is stop using the same exact version between Jenkins core and the Jenkins image. We need a, a way to, to say that version of the Jenkins image as that version of Jenkins, but we need something like a suffix like the package builds right. because Jenkins core is a dependency of the image. It's not the image. Right. I, I see your point. And certainly other 
other package delivery, other sis, other people who are doing these kinds of things are doing something similar, right? The uh, many of the container, the operating system container images have a dash suffix that they use to say this is version such and such, but it's this iteration of it. Thanks. So why does it concern the infrastructure is because so if it's okay, I will open an issue on help desk describing here. Because my point here is that we have uh, an action item long due, which is automating the creation of the image during part of the core release. I propose that we as a team start on the upcoming milestone automation of that part as infrastructure team, because that's part of the release scripts and processes. Because we are the person in charge of the credential running on release CI. And so that the pipeline and script and stuff should be able to create the tag on the Jenkins CI Docker. Uh, proposal, let me proposal to add Alex to make the upcoming LTS release safe. Proposal to automate the process in the future to avoid these permissions. Issue to open work to do by InfraTask. Is there any volunteer to work on that automation part? No? Okay, so I will open the issue. If anyone want to read the issue and, and, and change their mind, everyone is welcome to help us on that topic. Uh, let's start with now with the task that we were able to finish last week, unless anyone has a comment, objection, question on the topic we just, we are about to close. One, two, three, okay. Uh, now, what are the tasks that we were able to close during the past milestone? Um, thanks, Stefan, for the digital ocean uh, leftover. Uh, we had a leftover persistent volume. And since we don't have a garbage collector on digital ocean, uh, then we had that one that we don't have often, so that's OK. Uh, confirm that uh, the Azure uh, budget should be under the 10K, uh, the 10K as, as forecasted for this month. Uh, one of the main efforts we did was on the age, virtual machine agent from CI Jenkins IO, uh, the change of instances that allowed us to drop uh, creating an SSD for each machine. And the fact that we use new instance type with the same capacity, the CPU are way more powerful and we enable spots that decreased of a factor of 10 the price per hour, leads us to a drastic decrease of the costs. So that's, in, that's really interesting. Um, now, we need to check with the developer of the acceptance test harness and the developers of the core if they saw a lot of builds that, that slow them down, that could be caused by the spot instances. We check that we have a retry mechanism, thanks to Basil, that uh, used the retry mechanism that detect an agent failure. But I saw failure during the past week on CI Jenkins IO that might or might not be related to that. So better to ask the contributor themselves. Um, what would happen? That means we might have to define two kinds of uh, instances for this job, the high memory instances, some that will be the default with spot and some that will be high meme critical, where explicitly on the pipeline you call the label critical, but the people uh, using that will, uh, will require a close review if it's really needed. Um, also, we have some work that we'll discuss a bit later, started by Hervé and Stefan, to start using virtual machine on digital ocean. That could be the solution. We might say we only use low cost spot on Azure, and on digital ocean, we use higher cost uh, instances, but that won't fail during the build. That could be also a way to extend and spread the load. But right now, the cost decreased, so that the issue is cost. It's closed, sorry. Launchable, Hervé, can you give us a quick report? 
So with the help of uh, Brazil, uh, Launchable is now uh, uh, available, uh, properly installed on the nano server uh, image we are using on Windows uh, virtual machine agent or CI Jenkins .io. So we don't need to use uh, Python.exe to call uh, this um, this tool. And uh, Basil uh, cleaned up uh, the pipeline where it was used, uh, where the pipeline library we, we put in place before was used in the uh, core, ATH, and several other uh, repository. Then we proposed a cleanup for the pipeline library. So we don't have any bits around the, about that anymore. It's called okay. directly in the shell command. Cool. So the initial phase of discovery is now finished. The initial, the secondary phase of setting up the tooling has been done, and now we are, uh, we finish the third phase of optimization, and it's usable. And as far as I can tell, there is a lot of hidden work by URV uh, about automation of the updates of Launchable to keep track of uh, Launchable on all of our assets in a synchronous time, so that should allow us to keep up with the new changes provided by Launchable. So nice job. So now let's move on the work in progress. Uh, we have a lot of long running tasks that spawn across multiple milestones. Uh, let me check from the notes. First, add Azure IRM64 virtual machines for InfraCI. Stefan, what is the status related to InfraCI? I think I just forgot to close this one because I did manage to add the, the condition on the update CLI to make sure that the Azure uh, version of the gallery was uh, uh, available before uh, launching the update. So okay. I, I did finish this morning, so I think I just forgot to close the issue. Okay, I will add one last condition before closing. Since you remove any usage of AWS on Infra CI, you yeah. have to check that we don't have any more any AWS uh, credentials or in oh. Infra CI, just to be sure we don't need. And that means also removing the EC2 plugin and associated uh, plugins from the controller. Okay. One so last so the removal of the EC2 plugin really means we won't use EC2 virtual machines. And if we need them, we will put it back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But only in FRA-CI there. Is that okay for you? Yes. Okay, so I propose we keep that issue on the milestone. And we will close it once we won't have any reference of credential or plugin in InfraCI itself. Is that okay for you? Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I checked on the um, uh, billing on, uh, on AWS and we saw uh, a, a difference. It's minor compared to what the bomb builds are generating, but still it's visible. Good impact on the AWS building. Oh, by the way, Hervé, the launchable work done by um, by Basil w allowed him to contribute on the bomb a few weeks ago. So it also had an indirect positive impact on the building on AWS. Uh, next topic, upgrade to Kubernetes 1.25. So now our system use kubectl 1.25. Our cluster are still 1.24. Uh, that update is required on AKS to be able to use Ubuntu 22.04 uh, node pools. Uh, right now, currently checking on the deprecated uh, directive that we should update on our Elm charts. And once that will be done, that will be change log reading for each of the providers. Um, the, I'm proposing the following plans, folks. I'm taking that issue, uh, as I said last week. Uh, I will want to start updating DigitalOcean as soon as possible. Uh, then, because it's uh, it's used by CI Jenkins IO for plugins, usually the updates are going really most on DigitalOcean because we don't have a, a lot of complex things there. 
then I will want to continue on uh, AWS, which is a bit more sensitive, but still only used by CI Jenkins IO. So the scope will be only impact on CI Jenkins IO if it fails. Then um, we will have to work on Azure, but since we have the migration of prod public gates to public gates, that one might be locked before updating to the new Kubernetes version. So I propose that for the upcoming milestone, I only target DigitalOcean for sure and eventually AWS, and we will uh, do a status report next week. Is that okay for all of you? Or did I miss something? Or do you have other proposal, ideas, objections? Let's start with the okay. Eventually, I know AKS is the most important one, but that's also the, the one that required most care. So I would prefer uh, finishing the migration to have less cluster to upgrade. To upgrade. And, and if I'm not mistaken, there's two uh, in DigitalOcean. Yes, you are correct. Public gates migration for AKS. So the migration on public gates. Um, so Hervé, you only did over to me. So you're ready. Can you report on what you did during the past milestone before the handover? Since last week. And your mic is off. Since last week, uh, I've tested the Redis uh, connection from the new cluster, and I've started uh, the creation of uh, PostgreSQL uh, server on the, in, a, in another uh, place, so we won't be affected by the overlapping issue, uh, overlap uh, IP issue. Um, and uh, yeah. I've looked at uh, the text on the uh, release. You migrated okay. some of the services already, wiki, yep. since okay. last Tuesday. Migrated the wiki, Jenkins IO. It's been more than one week. Sure. Um, okay. Yeah, we migrated them on Friday. Okay. True that, my bad. So it okay. was uh, mostly uh, preparation work. Okay. Uh, preparation work. So you ended over because you will have a short uh, week. You have some days off for this long weekend. So that's the reason why I'm taking over on this one. Um, one of the main elements you, you identified earlier today and shared with me, Hervé, I wasn't aware. We have uh, one stateless application yet. Um, the incremental publisher. That one should be easy to migrate. Is that okay? Yes. Stateless, easy to migrate. To do and then I plan on work. Uh, the goal is migrating key cloak to test match the database. Just a word about the PostgreSQL database, it wasn't that easy. We needed to create a new instance and we realized that uh, this managed instance does not support IPv6 network, so we had to create a specific network and now I'm I'm fighting against network peerings and accesses. So it has been created with success with the new network and I'm working on accessing from the new cluster and also from our management system. So the database are automatically created. Right now I got time out on both. So I need to find which security groups or routing or peering I, I failed to have. And the last mile is that I discovered that the virtual network peering created by Terraform are incomplete. So that was already the case, Hervé, when you created the network a few months ago. I don't know if you remember, you created a peering from private to public. Terraform and the Azure API reports that everything is okay. But when we go on the Azure UI, it says it's incomplete. 
and we are missing the symmetric pairing. It, it looks like it's a recent change, less than one year ago on the way we created. I tried some peering manually, and when you create manual peering from the UI, it creates both peering now, which wasn't the case. So I'm gonna have to work on that part, creating both symmetrical, but need the documentation reading uh, before that. So you did right, it's just, it looks like it changed in the way uh, as you maintain it. So right now I cannot access the public cluster from private cluster and I cannot access the new database cluster from the one. So I guess public to database is not working despite the, for the same reason. So that should be the next uh, priority task for me. Next issue, peak of usage cost for the prod core releases resource group. So that issue, uh, I plan to close it. I will wait until end of May and see the status of the billing. We don't know why beginning of April, the cost on that system increased a lot. And now it has decreased since one week suddenly. Multiple theory, multiple analysis uh, didn't the issue. Uh, but the answer is we don't know why. Is this because of the DNS uh, decreased workloads thanks to the work that Hervé did on the Datadog agent on the clusters? Is it because we are migrating to public gates? Is it something else? My proposal is to wait end of the month. In fact, it's not the end of the month that counts. The most important is we will have to check the state of the billing and the usage and the error rate. Once we will have migrated to the new Kubernetes 1.25 because it fixes issue on the CSI Azure file provider, which is the core here. And once we will have migrated everything from the overlapped network because that could be network issues. So um, wait for and publicates. The good news is that the cost decreased drastically, allowing us to go back under the 10K per month threshold on Azure. But we have to keep this issue open and check for it uh, weekly. Don't hesitate if you have any question on that topic to ask on the issue or on the channel. Migration of trusted CI Jenkins IO. So same we had on Dover because uh, Stefan, you had, to, uh, you had a long weekend last week. So the handover went really fine. Uh, the work you did was working. We had a virtual machine that were connected to Puppet. Um, Puppet, is, uh, Puppet management is uh, finished. Uh, there were bootstrap issues, but that wasn't related to your work. These issues uh, existed on the Puppet profile since four years now, so it's fixed. Uh, it's because we don't initialize a new controller every day with Puppets. Uh, for the free VMs. Um, had to done fix ups on the security groups. So everything was locked down. <laughs> so everything was locked down. That, we had to lock perfect. specifically some elements. Uh, but now we can have the SSH. So the next steps are um, data migration from AWS. Uh, so we have two data, the Jenkins home, that should be the quickest, but we have all the cached data on the agent for the update center now. Uh, and the second one is there are still some security groups to apply to the permanent agents. Oops, to fine tune for permanent agent. The reason is uh, I forgot about this one and everything is done on the controller side, but the permanent agent is on another subnet. So the fine tuned security groups on the controller subnet are applied to the bounce virtual machine, the controller virtual machine, but not the permanent agent. So we just so, need to duplicate and to apply on the on the correct subnet. Okay. And adapt because some the, the network flows might be a bit different. But everything is going really fine, nice job. Uh, Stefan, are you okay to take back on uh, the security group part to help me on that topic on the upcoming milestone? Would it be okay for you? Yes, of course. So I propose um, with a small secondary yeah. and we invert the roles for the second task. Is that okay for you? Yeah, perfect. 
Okay. Okay. Any question? No. Okay. Use digital ocean virtual machine and agent instead of container agent for CI Jenkins. So we mentioned it earlier. Uh, Hervé, Stefan, what's the status on this one? Uh, for my part, I did manage to build uh, uh, an image on digital ocean through Packer. Uh, it's not full uh, automatic, but it's built by Packer. And uh, and I hand over to Hervé to uh, try and play with the plugin DigitalOcean from a controller to spawn VM with that image. We can only have Intel uh, Ubuntu 22.04. There is no ARM, ARM in uh, DigitalOcean. OK, and, Hervé. And, and no Windows. Yep. Yep. I didn't have time to work on that yet. No problem. No Windows in the O, but at least normal. And I mean, VM. Okay. Uh, Hervé, I believe you have a short milestone. Is it something you, sh you can work on, or should we defer that issue uh, to in two weeks? Uh, I think it's better to, yeah, to, I yep. won't have time. I don't think I will. Okay, no problem. Install and configure Datadog plugin on CI Jenkins IO. Array, can you report on this one? Uh, I still have, I didn't have time to work on the, Communication issue between uh, Datadog, which is running uh, on the host, and uh, Jenkins uh, controller, which is running inside the uh, Docker container. Okay. Uh, CI.g container host Datadog agent. Okay. Uh, do you need help or do you want to work alone on this one? Yes, I like. Uh, we the, can take something for that. I'd like, so. I'd like to, yeah. Okay, you are going off. Uh, you are still there tomorrow, but th uh, Thursday you are off. Is that correct? No, I'm off Friday. Oh, even better. Okay, so is it okay if we keep that one on the new milestone? Yes. And I will try to spend some time with you today. That might be complicated, but tomorrow is it okay for you? So that will let you yes. want. Up, up to Thursday to work on it? Yes. Okay. Need team sync. Okay. Thanks, survey. Clean up and import and manage Datadog monitoring in Terraform. What's the status of this one? Uh, I've let that open. Uh, I've got the... There are two, um, two old uh, monitors that okay. uh, aren't currently applicable uh, because they're, uh, they were watching uh, jobs that now are on trusted. So okay. we would need to, to create or put in place uh, a file way, a way to retrieve info from trusted jobs uh, via public files or something like that. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, that means for that issue, for the scope of that issue, that means deleting the monitor now because they are manually managed and they are not used and they don't have any data. So that's, they are a good candidate to be deleted. And I'm sure we have an issue. We might have already issue from Daniel, but I'm not sure. Either create a new one that say, okay, we need to monitor trusted, explain the need so we can build a new solution from that. Does it sound good for you? Yes. And you say we still have these two holds, but all the other monitor except these two are now managed as code due to the work you did. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes. The, oh, that's good job because everything was done manually. So that helps a lot. And that will allow us to create monitor when needed. Demonstration, the work you did yesterday during the inode full we had on infra CI. In less than one hour, we were able to 
fix the incident and have a monitor to avoid reproduction in the future. So that's a demonstration that that work is really useful. Thanks. Did I miss something on that topic earlier? Do you want to add something else? No, it's, uh, that's good. Um, delete, create issue, stating the, the problem to solve. Okay, so can I let you finish this one? Yes. You can go for deleting and opening the issue that should be closable. CI Jenkins IO, new VM instance type. Uh, the virtual machine is created. It's waiting for Puppet port. Waiting for Puppet and security groups. Uh, I was waiting for finishing the trusted port before applying to the new CI Jenkins IO instance. Um, the main issue here is the VPN, the private VPN should be able to allow access to the public network where the new instance is created. And now I discover with the public gates creation that the peering are not working as expected. So I was stuck on that part. I wasn't able to SSH to the instance or test my security groups. So that's the reason. So now the, that's why the public uh, migration is most important because we need to fix the network, migrate the clusters before continuing. So if it's okay, I will uh, move this um, I, I, uh, for this milestone. I will destroy the virtual machine because we are paying for it and we don't need. So I will comment out. Terraform will destroy the resources, and then I will defer in two weeks before finishing the rest. Is that okay for all of you? Destroy the temp resources and then wait for gates. Trusted CI task to be finished because that CI Jenkins IO task will benefit from the others. Defer in two weeks. Artifact caching proxies and reliable. Uh, Stefan, I propose that we will pair together on that one. So, what I did since last week, I was able to create manually um, uh, tested manually on CI Jenkins IO, new inbound mode for virtual machines. So the goal for the artifact caching proxy reliability is that in Azure, it's still unreliable. On DOKS, we don't have the issue. On the bomb builds, we have decreased on AWS. So we still have issues, but we don't have a workload that justify the spending time on diagnosing. However, on Azure, we still have issues that are easily reproducible with acceptance test harnesses. And it's so not order... due to the, to the network uh, problem? Um, that could be. That's okay. still issue on Azure with the overlapped network. Still issue might or might not be the cause. So um, I tested on CI Jenkins IO, new kind of inbound agents that works very well. So the goal is to switch from SSH to inbound from the ephemeral Azure virtual machine. So we can migrate the agent on a new subnet that has been already created on the new network with no issue. This agent will start and connect back to CI Jenkins IO. Oh, so without no problem the network. Exactly. That, that's inbound. Okay. Exactly. Next step, migrate VM agent of CI Jenkins IO to new network. So the next step, uh, Stefan, is you and I to update the init script you created yeah. on the agent definition. We need to append some content to start the inbound process with the work from Team Jacom. So I need to share within, knowledge within the cloud it. init. Uh, it's not cloud in it. We need, oh. th that's details. Okay. We need yeah. to work on Sorry. that area. You build it. So cool. I, I've tested with the help of team. So the goal now is to share knowledge with you. So then we can see how we describe the work, you, me, both. I don't really care, but the goal is to migrate these agents. So that needs multiple tiny iterations. First, 
moving to inbound, then moving to the new uh, network, and then see if it's still okay. Okay. Good for you? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so for the next milestone, let's check the triage or new incoming issue, if it's okay for you. Can you read my screen or do you need me to... Is that okay? Okay, I see on your face you are mocking me, so that means it's readable. Or buy yourself glasses. Um, had the pod garbage collector to our Jenkins agent Kubernetes clusters. Uh, that one uh, for me, oh, I need to switch to a session where I'm authenticated, sorry. Here we are. I don't think we should be able to work on this one. The goal is to create a Kubernetes cron job on our Elm chart. So we have a cron job run by Kubernetes as a pod that will take care of deleting agents. I propose we defer this one for later. Is that okay for everyone? I'm removing the triage since we have covered the, at least the why. Um, and yeah, no milestone for this one. Uh, then what do we have? We have create an, an RM64 not pool on publicates to start using RM64 pods. Stefan. Yes. First, do we agree that the goal is to start trying on a new publicates cluster to have workloads running on RM? The example yeah. of Javadoc is a good one because it only runs Nginx. So that should be a good candidate to work on the new one. Do you think you should be able to work on that topic on the upcoming milestone? I can try too. Do you think we can start before the end of the migration? Yes, no, no impact. Now that Javadoc that, has been migrated, even better. yes. The, the warning I gave you last week is that we had to wait for Hervé to have a plan on which service are migrated uh, two weeks ago. But since then, Hervé migrated these services that are stateless. So now you can start working on a new version. Cool. Hervé, is that yeah. okay for you or did I miss something? So I'm removing triage unless someone has an objection because we agreed it, it looks like no one object on that goal and the impact it could have. Can you assign myself, please? Okay. And so that means, Stefan, I can add it to the upcoming milestone. Is that okay? I will try. Thanks. A backup LDesk issue as markdown, Hervé. Yes, this one is more, uh, it's not uh, important at all. Uh, it's okay. about uh, backing up uh, issue in LDSK as Markdown in a folder in this repository. So when uh, we someone executes a, a search in uh, repositories, uh, they can get more hits on the results. Uh, we are currently uh, discussing a lot about uh, multiple services in uh, help desk issues. But when we want to search, I don't know, uh, Lettuce, for example, I want to search Lettuce in uh, every repositories. Right now, I'm grabbing all previous meeting, all previous discussion and uh, sort of like that, all uh, logs, uh, can stay uh, which can be in the repositories having the issues as markdown in this repository will allow me and maybe others to grab for so for name or for anything uh, in uh, issues too okay that makes sense um is it an issue if the repository where the content is stored will be something like Jenkins uh, infra slash archive or or data mm -hmm. or something to avoid too much event? Yeah, uh, the thing is that documentation is already taken and it's not documentation for me, it's raw data. So that's why it, that's a life cycle sure. different sure. between, but if it's okay on another repository, you can proceed. 
unless someone has an objection, so I remove the try edge because the goal is clear. As you said, it's not important, but if you want to work on it, don't state. Do you want me to put it on a milestone or is it okay if we leave it as it? No, no milestone for this one. No need for a milestone. Okay. Um, what do we have? Agent experience lacks the polish of GitHub action, opened by Basil. Uh, so Basil is requesting to have Docker the it's Docker correcting. command and the Docker engine inside the uh, inside the Kubernetes cont agent container that we run on CI Jenkins IO. The te technologies of, such as Firecracker and Kata containers allows the underlying machine instead of running containers to run a, a really specific virtual machine lightweight and start. So you can run Docker engine within. So nested Docker engine without any issue. Uh, technically, Firecracker come from AWS, so that shouldn't be an issue uh, on the paper, at least to uh, add it to an EKS cluster. For DigitalOcean, I don't know if we can change the container runtime. And on Azure, we can use both. And Olivia and I looked at Sysbox also in the past. Uh, so that could be a great idea. Anyway, that's not our priority. So I will add a message for Basil. That, that's absolutely okay. But given we have different Kubernetes container that could create a constraint on the technology and cloud provider we use. But maybe we could have a node pool on a single uh, element just for people who need Docker. That could be an alternative to the virtual machine that could help on the cost control as well. A single virtual machine for a single build costs always a bit more than a pod. Maybe maybe but, we can use digital ocean for, for that kind of, of matter too, you know? I don't know if you... Yes, also for the costs only, uh, but here what is pointing Basil is for the developer in terms of developer experience. So that is that the, the fact that they need the agent to start really quickly. And that depends on how much time the virtual machine takes to start, connect to Jenkins and see. The spawning time, yes. Yes, so that one, uh, I'm removing triage because we have discussed this one. Uh, I need to add a message to Basil here to say, that's a nice idea. I have a few links to point, but right now we cannot work on that. That's optimization and we have other priorities. So we cannot, uh, we don't have the matter of time to work on this one. Anyway, that's a good idea. And if you're interested, looking at Firecracker and Kata Container are a really interesting piece of technology for running Docker in Docker. Sorry. <clears throat> um, but so the peak of usage, we have covered this one. And oh, a new one, forgot my username. Okay, so that one will be automatically on the milestone. I will remove the trade after. Uh, one last thing, do you have other issues uh, that we have on the infra team sync next that you want to work on on the upcoming uh, on the upcoming milestone? Uh, one I want to bring because that might be helpful for uh, the Google Summer of Code. So we have the Ubuntu 2204 20 upgrade campaign automatically uh, because we are working uh, with the updates of trusted CI. And support Linux container when running on Windows virtual machines. That one, I want to add it to the new milestone. The reason is the following, not only James Nord and Jesse Glick mentioned use cases on some plugins where they really want to test that use case for the pipeline plugin, for instance, when there is a Jenkins agent running on a Windows machine that has a, a Linux virtual machine with Docker and they want to spin up a Docker agent using the Docker plugin or workflow plugin. Bruno also brought to me, there is a Google Summer of Code project where the goal is to automate the test to provide technical elements for some of the Docker tutorials of the Jenkins IO documentation. 
For instance, let's get started with Jenkins. Download that file, install Docker, run Docker Compose up, go to localhost, whatever, do this, do this, do this, and you have a working Jenkins instance. That kind of tutorial, the technical element provided as part of that documentation should be tested. The idea is to test them on the infrastructure on CI Jenkins IO at least once a week. So once a week, you would have a repository with a job that spin up these elements and check that the Docker Compose and the image are working with a few requests. So at any moment, if there is an issue on the tutorial, we can identify that could be uh, a way to check if the latest LTS version that just been released haven't broken or a plugin breaking the, this test, etc. And as part of that Google Summer of Code, one of the optional elements will be tests a scenario with a user running on the Windows machine, Windows 10 or 11, with Docker Desktop and WSL. That's the most common case now, which is the default. And you want that Linux tutorial to work even from a Windows OS. And that implies, yeah, a lot of elements. That's easier on macOS, even though macOS could be interesting to test. So that case of a Windows host with a Linux Docker engine is another case to add to that issue. Um, I remember, Hervé, you said you were able manually to install Docker Desktop on Windows Server, even though it's not officially supported. So that could be an easy way. Since we have Chocolatey, maybe our Windows Packer templates could install Docker Desktop. Advantage is that we will benefit from the commands that allows developer to switch from Windows container to Linux container. So the idea is to start working on that topic and see if Docker desktop can be installed through Chocolatey on our templates. And if it works, that's a swap in replacement for the container we already use. Instead of installing Docker CE, we install Docker desktop, that's all. So the goal is to try working on this one. <clears throat> is that clear for everyone? Is there any question, objection on this one? Nope, okay. And then I'm adding the Ubuntu 22.04 campaign because we are back at it. Okay, that's all. Is there any question, anything you want to add? Nope, okay, I'm stopping the screen sharing. And I'm stopping the recording. So for people watching this recording, see you next week.